Hey everybody, Sam here. Welcome back to Green Acre Homestead. Welcome back to the next video in our mobile home roof over series where we put a move put a new roof on our 1988 Palm Harbor single wide mobile home, adding overhangs, eaves, and gutters where we had none to begin with. We've already got the roof decked out as you guys have seen in previous videos. If you haven't seen that one, link down below for the full playlist of all the videos and steps of this whole project. Today I'm going to start framing up the eaves i guess you would say or ladders or rafter tails i don't have a clue what they're called but we're going to do that however before we jump into this project that's right there it is i'm not a pro disclaimer i didn't graduate from the college of roofology i'm not a professional mobile homologist either i'm just a dude working on his house feeling confident with what he's doing at his home where he lives so that being said don't do what i'm doing sit back eat some popcorn and enjoy the show. That being said, let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to the roof. All right, so what I wanna show you real quick is one or two methods of how to find the pitch of your roof. The reason I wanna know the pitch of my roof is because I wanna start framing the eaves underneath the plywood overhangs, and I need to know exactly what angle to cut all my boards so they're all nice and pretty and beautiful to then get covered up by everything. The first method I want to show you is probably the easiest and it's the one that you might already have the tools to do it yourself without buying anything special. You're going to need a speed square and a small little six inch level. Now if you notice on these speed squares they got a couple of different marks and everything and the ones we're going to be paying attention to is your pivot point which is this top corner that's uh, where this this edge and this edge meet that's your pivot point. And then we're going to be looking at this common and label with the numbers. What this means are these, these are common rafter pitches. Um, there's also degrees, there's also hip valley, top cuts. We're all going to look at that. We're just looking for common rafter pitch to get our roof pitch. So take your speed square, lay it flat on top of your roof here, and have your pivot pointing up. You want it just like this. So you take your speed square, you're going to lay it just like that, pointing straight up on your roof. Then you're going to take your little torpedo level and rest it at the pivot. Be sure it's not so far that it's hitting the roof and it's not so far back that it's not actually pivoting or resting right on the edge of that. Once you have that, kind of hold it in place and then sight down the torpedo level and raise it up until you find your level point. There we go. 412 pitch is this roof. Now what I can do is I can take my speed square and I can either use this directly to mark my rafters or if I want to get special and pull out another tool, you can have one of these uh, angle finders is kind of what I call them. They're also called bevel gauges. You can take this and line it up one way or the other. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Here we go. You can line it up like this with your pivot, put it on the four and line it up here. And that way this, when you cinch it down, can be used to put on all your boards and quickly just measure, scribe your line on the blade here. And you don't have to worry about always pivoting, making it right, line up with the four and doing it that way. So if you have a lot of cuts, one of these tools is really handy to use. And this is also a tool that's not just specific for roofing. All right, that's the common tools, the things you may have and the things that'll be useful outside of this realm but let me show you one specialized tool that i have i didn't go buy this tool i inherited it from my dad this is called a square by maze it's a johnson city product made in johnson city tennessee um honestly i'm looking for any kind of like trade name on it it's uh basically a square an adjustable square that is made just for roofing. The concept of this is the exact same as the speed square and the torpedo level. It just puts it all in one tool. It does that by embedding a little spirit bubble level here in the end of this plastic piece. And then this pivots up and down just like the torpedo level did with the square. So the way you use this is exact same concept. You lay it on your roof going up and down with the roof and you raise it until the bubble is level and then you tighten down these little set screws and that holds it in place. 
And then from here, if we look at the common rafters scale, we see it's right here at the number four. So it's a 412 pitch roof. This tool also has a lot of other degree indicators. So this here, you can set your you know, degrees kind of as a 90 to 45, if you're gonna use this to mark cuts otherwise. It also has on the side here stamped rise rafter per feet run and kind of some cheat tables, pretty neat stuff for roofing. And then here on the edge, it's got these two little indicator lines. One is labeled door sill. So if you're framing the sill of a door, that's the angle that you would want to use. And the other, a little bit steeper, is your window seal. Here on the other side, it's got your hip and valley rafters marked right here, and then regular um, standard metric, no, standard marks for just using it as a ruler in general. So this is a specialty tool. Like I said, I didn't buy this. I did inherit it, so it's kind of older, but I would imagine they surely still sell these. So pretty cool. Um, I'll probably go with this because I have this, but I did want to make sure and show you guys the method for using a speed square, a torpedo level, and then also a bevel gauge if you have it as well. Because it's always kind of, how exactly do you? <laughs> it's one of those things where um, it might not be easily understood at first. How do I measure the pitch of my roof? What's the easiest way? And really these small little tools are pretty easy to do. With that out of the way, I have my roof pitch now. I'll go ahead and measure my eave overhangs and start framing these guys up. So let's get down off this ladder before we fall. 412 roof. So here's a look at how to transfer the marks from a speed square to a piece of wood using the common rafter pitches. You always want to put your pivot point or your 90 degree on the right side and then you hold it here and you pivot it until the little mark for the number you want lines up with the top edge of the wood. This is good for probably a couple of cuts, but it would probably lead to a little bit of inconsistencies if you have a lot to do. So that's where a tool like this, the specialty rafter marking majig, comes in handy because you can cinch it down tight and you know that it won't change and it's a lot faster and quicker to do. All right, this whole conglomeration is just to build me this little jig here to find out the actual angles and lengths of these, let's call them short rafters for the eaves so that I can replicate a ton of these. This two by four is gonna go against the house. This represents the side of the house. And then the roof, I wanna make sure that it's gonna be you know, a certain length and it will come up like that. There'll be a little triangle gap, but that's normal with roof framing. And then I want to make sure when I added the fascia board or whatever that part down there is called, that I'm still within the correct overhang for the plywood that's already up on the roof. Everything looks good. So now take this apart, measure it, and replicate this a whole lot.
just got back from the hardware store Lowe's in our case but you know same as Home Depot or whatever you got where you're at I picked up another 10 2x4s to continue with framing out the eaves and uh, oh my gosh lumber is getting stupid expensive I don't use the word stupid much but it's getting stupid expensive when I bought 2x4s a couple of weeks ago it was um no, it wasn't even a couple weeks ago because I was doing the roof and I brought the Jeep over to unload them. Those 2x4s at that point were crazy expensive. They were $6.80 a piece. $6.80 for one 2x4 by 8. I thought that was expensive. Apparently not. Apparently the sky is the limit because today when I got these boards from Lowe's, the exact same boards as before, they're $8.10 a piece. I really regret not getting the 2x4s and Eve material whenever I bought the plywood months ago, but I honestly didn't know what I was going to get myself into, and I didn't, I just didn't know. If I knew, I would have gotten this wood a long time ago, and I'd be selling wood used on the internet. Hindsight, 2020. So, there's not really much we can do about it. We've got to press on and get this job done. So we'll just cry the whole way. This particular trip to Lowe's for 10 of these boards and a box of three and a half inch long screws was $118. That's crazy. That is ridiculously crazy. Anyway. That's enough about that. It's enough about prices and money because we just ain't going to dwell on that because it's not happy, happy stuff. All right, I've got all of my... I'm going to call these rafter tails. I have all the rafter tails cut for finishing out... I won't say all of the Eve members, but the ones that I know are full length. Okay, Sam, explain that. What exactly do you mean by that? Our house on paper, I think, is like 75 feet long. I always had it in my mind when I was buying materials for the roof that it's an 80 foot. 80 feet will be plenty, more than enough. So my thinking is, if I have 8 foot eaves sections divided by 80 feet, that gives you 10. However, accounting for the overhangs, take one away, and then account for other weirdness, take another away. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with making 16 eave thingamajob majigs widgets, and then we'll go from there. I think at that point, hopefully because how expensive this wood is hopefully at that point it'll be less than an eight foot span and i will just cut and build a custom one for each side and be done so we'll see Here's a little trick I've developed. If I hold it with my left hand and put my thumb over the top, I can use this to find and feel whenever it's flush with the top of the board, and then I'm able to get things a lot easier, put them together easier and all that. And so the first screw is in, I use my speed square, and then I square up the rafter tail to the board, just so everything's nice. There we go. One rafter thingamajig, blah, 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 whatchamacallit, widget, done.
All right, so here's something that happened. I went ahead and stopped the time lapse because I want to show you guys a little trick on how you can get around one of the situations when you're building where you're going to probably say a wordy dirt. And that's when you put a screw through the end of a board and it splits the wood. So let me show you a little trick that I learned from it's a family member a long time ago. I don't remember who it was though. Friend, family member, someone, might have been YouTube. YouTube's my friend, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna turn the camera down here and go ahead and explain the process to you guys. Basically what you want to do is back that screw out that just splits your piece of wood and then you're going to go into the perpendicular face of that wood, drive another screw or nail in this case through it and kind of pin the two split pieces of wood together. Let me show you how that works and it should make better sense. There you go. That's a little trick I learned many years ago and I have used quite a lot as far as salvaging a piece of wood and letting it be good enough. That's right. For state work, homework, YouTube work, or whatever work you're doing. There we go. That is the last one of the ones I'm going to build for now. So awesome. Good progress made today and I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Let's we'll see you on the next video. I ain't gonna do y'all that way. Don't you worry. We're getting ready to get our rigs on, tool belt rig, and get up on the ladder. We're gonna put at least one piece up today. Let's go. All right, switched over to the GoPro. This is gonna be the easiest camera to capture this with. And find a place to put you. You notice, I've already got a little bit of this done already. See that piece down there? Yeah, don't worry. I had to make sure it worked before I built all those, right? Come on, I'm not dumb. There is a plan here. It may not look like it when the final video is done and I've cut all my rambling but I got a plan don't worry all right we'll pull out the staples really strong staples too that way I can fit this behind the overlayment that we wrapped around so let me clamp you somewhere I don't know where yet and get it done Here a bit higher than the other. Got some flex there. Let me get another one in the board down here and then I can pull this one down and make them perfectly flush there. I have two screws holding this up so I'm going to go through and put at least one per cavity hole. I don't need to go crazy with the screws. This is just supporting one foot or less once it's been trimmed off of plywood and metal roofing so it'll be good enough. I want to go ahead and just work my way down this rafter unit eve box ladder wood i don't know and uh as i go i'm gonna push it up into the corner and drive a three and a half inch screw through it through the two by four through the metal siding and into the double header of the top of the wall of the house that was a mouthful it took me a couple of times to say that one All things considered, being my first time ever doing this kind of a project and only being the second one that I stuck up there, it went pretty smoothly and I think it's gonna work out really, really well. Once they are screwed up on there, those Eve things that I've been building, these things are really strong. So rock on, no worries about not being strong enough to hold one foot worth of roofing. I appreciate y'all watching as always. Remember, this is just one part of a very long series. Well, okay, hopefully not incredibly long since I'm filming this and it's not done yet. But 
it's one part in a series of us putting a new roof on our mobile home if you're interested in this and you haven't caught the other bits and pieces maybe you just dropped in on this one for whatever reason go check them out there's a link to the playlist down below there's also links down below if you want to support the channel we appreciate all of you watching commenting you got any questions concerns wondering what in the world we're doing looks like you don't have a plan sam need some help i think we're all right but still leave your comments down below i'm not going to turn away good advice i'll take every bit i can get the comment section is where you do all that awesome stuff we read every one and we try to respond to as many as we can given we are still plugging along every free minute on this project right now as always thanks for watching we'll see you guys next time on the homestead